young people confessing their Christian faith in the rite of confirmation this morning. Uh, so that will be after the, uh, the sermon today. Uh, we prayed together divine service setting one. That's on page 151, page 151. So go ahead and mark that in your hymnal. We'll sing our first hymn 463. 463. <laughs>
his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Speak together the intro and it is printed on the back of our bulletin. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. to you for help, and you have healed me. O oh Lord, you have brought my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O oh you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name.
pray. Oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise. That among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now, in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nightmare, and Timon, and Parthenus, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the, the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. And some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now, when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he cried out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling from his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This lesson of the first Peter chapter 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, 
and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, they stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn in our hymnal to page 156, page 156. We stand as we sing our hallelujah verse and hear the words of the gospel.
Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Maybe seated, we sit our next year. Uh, five, two, six. Five, two, six. Many. 
But what Jesus says in our gospel reading for this morning disagrees with that notion. When he says clearly and plainly, he doesn't mince words, he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that's our limit. That is the constraint that we have to deal with this morning. But let's stop for a moment quick, because I'm sure many of you heard this voice, or heard this verse, the, the words of Jesus, when I read it, when Jesus says, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. And you probably didn't feel constrained at all. You did not feel restricted when you heard those words of the Lord Jesus. You probably didn't even come close to picturing this verse writ written on a speed limit sign. Jesus being the way and the truth and the life is in fact our whole world, our whole existence. Verse 6 of our gospel is indeed a pretty limiting statement and an exclusive statement even. But to us whom God has called out of darkness and into his marvelous light, we hold dear the fact that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we know that the way is truth to life. And so I want to spend a few moments on each of those three things. First, Jesus is the way. Now, two questions flow from this. Question one, well, the way to what? And question number two, well, why do we need a way to get there? Jesus answers the first question for us, if we didn't know already. But he is the one and only way to God the Father. He is the one and only way to the almighty, the all-knowing, the eternal creator of all things. He is the one and only way to the heavenly realms where God dwells. The way leads us there. But why do we need a way? Because we sin. We need a way because we cannot do it ourselves. Left to our own devices in finding God, we stray. The prophet Isaiah says this, he says, all we like sheep go astray. We have turned every one of us. No one is spared. We have turned to his own way. Even though we did that, Isaiah says, and the Lord has laid on him, that is Jesus, the iniquity of all. Likewise, St. Peter reminded us last Sunday much the same thing when Peter said to us, For you were straying like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. We need to be shown the way because we sin. Not only that, but even if we knew exactly how to crawl our way up to the throne of God, we could not approach him because of our sin. You see, God cannot be in the presence of sin. Sin and the all-perfect, all-holy God cannot exist in the same room. And so... He had to give us a way to come to him. And so he gave up his own son. 
that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life back in the presence of God. So Jesus is the way for us poor, miserable, lowly sinners to be made children of God. And that makes us able to come into his presence rejoicing in this gracious gift of Jesus being the way was so foundational for the first Christian church in the book of Acts that the very first Christians even called themselves the way. Acts 9.2 says that the members of the way were being persecuted. This brings us to the next word. Jesus is truth. Now we need to hear that especially in a world today where truth is relative from person to person. In a world where what is truth for me may not necessarily be truth for the next person over. And yet Jesus promises us that he is the truth for all people in every place at every time. What is the truth? Well, this is from our gospel reading, St. John chapter 14. Jesus says, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him, and I am in the father, and the father is in me. The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, Jesus says, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The truth is that Jesus Christ is the greatest and the most perfect revelation of God and God's love for this world and for all people. So if you want to see and to know God, look at Jesus, who is the truth. This is what we know about God through Jesus. What do we know about God, the truth of God through Jesus? Well, God created me in all things. God's most precious, beloved, chosen human creatures shows their own way over God's will and deserve only eternal punishment. But that's not what God gives. The truth is that God loved us so much that he came down to our level. He lowered himself to take on our human flesh and blood and be the person Jesus the Christ. He suffered and was crucified to pay for the sins of all his beloved children so that they would not perish, but that they would have life, not only life, life abundantly. <laughs> this is the absolute truth about God that he revealed to the world through his son, Jesus Christ. The way is truth. Indeed, that brings us lastly to life. Jesus is life. Our entire faith is all about life. All that our God does is for us is for life. And so Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And Jesus says, you know the way that I am going. This is where the way leads. 
this is what the absolute truth is all about. Everlasting life given to God's beloved children who cling to Jesus alone in faith. Now in a few moments you're going to hear four young people profess their Christian faith. With their own mouth they will say that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. They will promise to hear the word of God faithfully to receive the Lord's Supper whenever it is offered. And they will even promise to live faithfully in the Christian faith, even in the face of death. Now, confirmation kids, that's a tall order. But you're going to do it because you're well prepared. Because for the last, well, however old you are, you've been hearing the way and the truth the line. And you've been being prepared by the Holy Spirit who draws you to this faith, who brings you to Jesus, who loves you to the end and promises you this day that he has prepared a place for you. And so joyfully give your confession of faith in Jesus. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we know that the way is truth to life. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding guard our hearts and minds in one true faith, even into life everlasting. Amen. Well, I'll take a moment to worship our God with our tithes. Page 272. Page 
272. <laughs> Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So you compromise have been baptized, you have been catechized, that is, you have been taught the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. And so Jesus says to you today, Whoever confesses me before man, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Andrea, and Blake, and Isabel, and Leah. Do you, this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from the scriptures, as you have learned to know it from the small catechism, to be faithful and true. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord you have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Andrew, I'm going to have you come up and kneel first. Andrea, Michelle, Dickman, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven all of your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. In your scripture verse, Psalm 23, verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Blake, four and eighty.
the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all of your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your confirmation verse, Philippians 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. Isabel, Grace, Arnett, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all of your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your confirmation verse from Colossians chapter 2. Therefore, as you receive the Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Leah Isabel Tucker, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all of your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. In your confirmation verse, Psalm 27, verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that, bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children to the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood, renewing them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and, pre and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines, that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and love their neighbor, and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace now be with you. Amen. You can return to your seat. Commands will uh, walk out with me this morning, so you all will be able to greet them uh, after our service today. Uh, we continue with our prayers. I'll conclude each of our prayers with uh, by saying, "Lord, in your mercy." And you should respond by saying, "Hear our prayer." Please stand as we pray. Father, through the power of Christ's resurrection, you adopt all who believe in him. Receive us as your, your newborn children and nourish our faith through the pure spiritual mouth of your word that we may dwell in your presence forever. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
Heavenly Father, build up the households of your people, that your holy children begotten in baptism may grow in your grace and share together in your forgiveness and life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you are the author and orchestrator of all things. We pray that you would grant us seasonable weather for our agricultural processes. We especially pray that you would grant us rain, that the fruits of the earth may grow and sustain all of our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we uplift to your care those today who have confessed their Christian faith, Andrea, Blake, Isabel, and Olivia. Strengthen them in their confession of faith. Keep them forever in the Christian faith. And bless them with the Lord's Supper. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, for the sake of your dear Son, you have restored all things by his cross, granting healing, comfort, deliverance, and peace to those in need. Bless the sick, the sorrowing, the anxious, the fearful, the homebound, the homeless, the dying, and all who have requested our prayers, especially Tom, Arthur, Jesse, Cecil, Gail, Marilyn, Doreen, Caden, Ethley, Marvin, Pat, Gabe, Carolyn, Margaret, Russell, Karen, Bill, Rebecca, James, <coughs> Cody, Delaney, and all those whom we now name silently upon our hearts. Heal them according to your good and gracious will, and at the last, give them entrance into your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Father of the risen Christ, you give us the crucified and risen body and blood of our Lord in this holy supper. Let us taste that the Lord is good and continually grow up into salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. All these things we pray in faith and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament as it begins on page 160. <coughs> page 160. The Lord be with you. for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying he has destroyed death and by his rising again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with Mary Magdalene with Peter and John and with all the, all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying Lord 
Jesus Christ, and that same night when he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he also took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
on page 164, page 164, we stand as we sing, thank the Lord. Thank you. 